Hello everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, it's Lily here and today we're back at it again with another speed build in The Sims 4. This time I'm bringing you a Japanese inspired mansion or modern build or villa or whatever you want to call it but it's super modern, it's super chic, I would live here in a heartbeat, it's really big, it's not built for kids which is a big difference from a lot of the normal builds that I do. I wanted to go with something really chic and expensive looking and really really modern and so I kind of figured oh I'm not, just not going to put in any bedrooms for kids, I'm going to make this for an adult sim and I've actually moved in a criminal business oriented type of sim into this house as well and I kind of am living for this dark kind of twisted storyline that I'm creating <laughs> with the sim who currently lives here but anyway that's neither here nor there. Um, the build's pretty big, it's going to take a while to get through, but we'll blitz through it as fast as we can. As per usual, I'm at 800% speed, so let me know how that seems for you. Again, I can always slow things down a little bit more, but the videos end up super duper long, and it's a pain to edit. <laughs> And I'm actually really, really late with this edit today. It is, what time is it? It's 9 p.m. on Tuesday night. I left this really down to the wire here, but I've been away all weekend. I've had the most amazing weekend up the coast of, oh, where do I live? I forget that people don't all live here. So when I say up the coast, it doesn't really make sense. I've been up in the Northern rivers of New South Wales. It's the same sort of area as Byron Bay, which a lot of you or some of you may have heard of. It's a beautiful part of the world. I love it. My mum and my sister both live up there and I went up to visit. I didn't grow up there though. I did grow up in Sydney and my family have sort of just slowly moved there over the last five years or so and getting up there whenever I can is just the best because it's just such a beautiful holiday feel. There's a beach two minutes from our house and my mum's just finished this crazy renovation that's like the nicest thing I've ever seen. Um, I'm wondering whether or not I'll actually do a Sims version of her house because it's just stunning and I think that it would translate really well to The Sims. So I might do something on that in the future. So it was nice and inspiring up there. I always get inspiration for my Sims builds from real life anyway. Uh, although that said, for this build, I've never been to Japan. <laughs> I'm trying to do a Japanese inspired build here, but I've never been there and it's definitely on my bucket list and top places that I really want to go. But obviously with COVID, travel plans are very difficult to make at the moment. So I'm just happy doing my traveling around Australia and also building things in The Sims that are inspired by places that I want to go. I was going to consider building this in um, the Mount, uh, I'm going to butcher the name, I'm so sorry in advance, but Mount, Mount Coriambi, Coriambi? I, haven't gotten, I haven't got it in front of me, so I've definitely, definitely got that name wrong, but the town that comes with Snowy Escape, I haven't popped it in there. I tried placing it there and it just looked, it didn't look, it just looked wrong. Um, I definitely think it's better suited to this new crest vibe that I've got lots of green surroundings. And I think that even here in Australia, people really do take uh, elements of Japan and what their style is over there and they bring it into the Australian building scene and architecture scene as well. So this is kind of the avenue I was going down with this build. It's super modern. I've got lots of geometric shapes happening. Uh, it's really black and sort of concrete based, which is where that industrial vibe comes from and lots of dark tones. I think it's got this just really mature look about it, which is why I didn't end up putting any children or kids or teen sims in here. Although you certainly could, there's plenty of room. It's massive. I do only have two bedrooms built out, but you could absolutely change the study or sections of the living areas into bedrooms if you wanted to add more. Um, but yeah, I kept it quite pared back. I just thought this was such like an executive looking house. So that's what I went for. I'm just blitzing through the outside now. Lots of really like structured sort of 
garden landscaping I've got going on, I really wanted to make the whole outside like a zen garden. So I've popped down sand for the moment. I do end up changing that sand to the carpet that looks like sand with, you know, engravings in it that looks like a rake has gone through a zen garden type of sand. I hope I'm explaining that okay. For people who don't play The Sims that are watching, you're probably like, what are you talking about? But for the Simmers out there, you probably know what I mean. I will pop it in in a bit, but for starters, I just went with the usual sand that comes as a terrain tool to get me started. And I think this is one of my favorite builds to date, to be honest. It's pretty different and it's really dark. It's got almost like a masculine feel about it as well, but it was really fun to just do something completely new. As I said, I've never been to Japan. I only just got this expansion pack. So, you know, please don't be offended if I'm thinking that this is Japanese style when it isn't at all. It's just, I've butchered that as well, like the name. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to know if you'd live here, if you feel like it is Japanese inspired or, anything else really pop any comments you like in the in in oh, in down below pop whatever you like down below i'd love to hear about your travels to japan as well and like some of the best places to go and where i should make sure i put onto my list i am counting down the days till travel is again normal or at least semi-normal and you can start planning trips but anyway we're back inside now and we're up in the main bedroom. One of the tricks I like to do is create a wall that I can embed the bed into so that you can't see the headboard because I find the headboards in The Sims are kind of ugly. And I wanted this really like monotone, gray, sort of masculine vibe in here. So I'm using lots of grays and dark colors and a few wood tones just to warm it up a little bit. And those rugs as well have a little bit of a softer tone to them that's more, you know, inviting than the rest of the room, which can be quite dark otherwise. I'm also popping in some nice fresh plants and I'm using this timber slat texture. I call it slats, which is probably the wrong word for it, but like those wooden poles. Um, all over the place on the indoors of this build to add a little bit of flavor, I guess you could say. And I'm just popping in the little dressing area there and there is a shelf on the other side of the bed head where I put some clothes. I kind of like the idea of showing the clothes laid out like that, kind of like an open wardrobe. So that's what I've done there. I think that this bedroom is super zen and chill and relaxing and the perfect place to go after a hard day, being a criminal or a CEO as one of the Sims might be in this game. At least that's how I'm playing this household at the moment. And I'm just putting in some lights here as well. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I just fill the entire house with those little saucer lights. And then after I'm done furnishing the room, I delete them and suss out what the lighting is like. If I forget to delete them, then it ends up with crazy power bills and way too bright. I really like at nighttime in The Sims when it looks like nighttime and it's a bit more relaxing and you've just got little lamps that are on. So it's a fine line between you know, too much light and not enough. Anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. I'm now in the bathroom and I did this huge sort of wet room area. So a nice open shower with the tub up in the corner. And I'm just creating a little custom vanity here as well with one of those surface tables that come with dine out and popping in a huge mirror. I think this is just such an executive looking bathroom. It's so nice and it really matches the rest of the house quite nicely as well. I do cut out the second bathroom that I put upstairs, but there is one just to the right there that I, um, it's essentially just a mirror copy of this, but a bit smaller. So I did cut it out because this video was getting pretty long. <laughs> I know that people don't like when I cut stuff out, but sometimes it is inevitable, especially when it's 9 p.m. on the night that I'm meant to be putting a video up. Anyway, <laughs> this is the second bedroom. I actually, like this bedroom just as much as the first one so it's really like having a second master i have been playing around a lot recently with headboards and ways to make the bedrooms look more interesting so i was playing with the idea of having a bit of a living wall in this room and instead i just decided to go with this really cool custom bed head with an artwork framed on it as well and then i changed the colors of the rugs and the bed to match sort of the stone and the colors of the wall behind the bed 
and the artwork. So that's what I've done there. I love this room. It's beautiful. I would just fall asleep in there in a heartbeat if this was reality. I think your bedroom needs to be the most zen calming place it can possibly be otherwise it makes it really hard to sleep and I love sleeping it's my favorite thing so anything I can do to facilitate that I do in real life and in the sims as well and otherwise upstairs in between the two bedrooms we just have this cute little living second living space just with a couple of fireplaces that are embedded in this um marble stuff and a big tv just a place to come and hang out i do have the roommate um the roommate gameplay enabled at the moment so i've got only one sim in this entire house and then i rent out the second bedroom for a bit of variety because you never really know what you're going to get with a roommate <laughs> so this is kind of cool it's like the meeting place between the two bedrooms and where my sim and her new roommate can get to know each other and just hang out you know, have a wine, play some games and all that jazz. I've also got a cute little computer desk up here just so you can do a bit of extra work. There is an office space downstairs that we'll get to, but I think it's nice having a computer on both levels and especially having two computers so that your Sims don't end up fighting over needing to use one. And then just off the first master bedroom here is this big rooftop deck and I've got out there a couple of skill building things. So I've got a cute little chess set and I'm putting a bonfire in as well, but inside this little half wall contraption so that you can sit and have a bonfire in a little enclosed area on the roof. The flame is massive, be warned. It doesn't really fit inside the box I allocated for it that well, but it still does work. It's functional. You can toast marshmallows and fire dance and whatever up there if you're feeling like it. And then otherwise we've moved downstairs and we're just doing the, in what's it called? Oh my gosh, the, the living room, the lounge room, the chill zone, the coolest place in the house, really. And I've just got this cute little wall of marble with the fireplace embedded inside. I do end up changing this a little bit, just a tiny bit um, on the gallery so that the fireplace becomes functional, but it looks almost identical to how this ends up in the build that you'll see here. So don't worry about that. I've gameplay tested the entire build. So everything is functional inside the house so that you shouldn't have any issues while playing. If you do choose to download this from the gallery, which you can absolutely do at Brown Flower Sims. And I think I've just called this Japanese mansion or something of the sort. It's one of my most recent uploads. I tend to upload houses on the gallery a lot sooner than when I actually release the YouTube video. So if you do follow me on there, you will get access to a lot of the houses before I share them really with the rest of the world or before you see them on YouTube. So do make sure you follow me on there to keep in track with that. But anyhow, you'll see that I'm just adding in a couple of styling elements back down here in the living room. And I'm also adding in these mirrors behind those timber, I keep calling them slats, those pieces of timber. And I'm coloring them from orange through to yellow, like a bit of a gradient, which is a really nice way to add some mood lighting is with that mirror. Um, I also use it in the splashback in the kitchen and in some of the bathrooms as well. It's a really nice way to bring, bring a little bit of soft lighting into your living areas. And otherwise I've got this big dining table, which is actually just two dining tables stuck next to each other. And that's a nice way to get extra seating in there. And I'm just uh, anchoring that section onto a nice rug, which is nice and inviting. I think it's just a really nice, beautiful living room and it is off an open plan kitchen. So the kitchen I've gone for is black. I love black kitchens. I think they're so nice in, in real life and in The Sims, but I love, love, love black kitchens. There's this beautiful girl at work called Jasmine who has a black and white kitchen. And I always say at work, I mean at work in my real life. And it is just gorgeous. Every time I go there, I'm so inspired by her styling and everything else. And that's sort of come in here with this beautiful black kitchen as well. I've just popped the fridge on the right there and the island in the middle there as well. So you can sit on one side and the dishwasher and sink is on the other. That is one thing that I think I missed in the gallery um, is a sink. So you will need to add a sink to this kitchen, which there is a space for, but I just completely forgot about that, unfortunately. So there is a sink missing. 
But anyway, as you walk in the front door, which is where we are now, I wanted to do a bit of a mudroom where you could take your shoes off because I know that in a lot of Japanese homes, or at least in my friends' Japanese homes, they do take their shoes off before they come inside. That is not really super common practice everywhere in Australia. I know a lot of houses do do it, but it seems to be my two Japanese friends, both separate families, who always take their shoes off before they come in. So I thought a mudroom might be appropriate there as well. And just a cute little artwork on the side. And over here in this corner is the living not the living, sorry, the uh, study, the little study office. I wanted the office to be really nice because again, that gameplay aspect for the Sim who lives here, who is in the corporate criminal world, I wanted to have somewhere that was like the Zen place that she could go and do all of her mischief and, you know, hack into computer software programs and whatever else she does as a criminal for a living. And so I made this like half dividing wall with some other pieces of wood and just used that, um, that big tall plant thing as like a cement, I suppose like, uh, what do you call, support, like a cement support. And on the other side, I've just got the little desk that your Sims can sit at. So I really like how that turned out and I'm just matching the cabinetry behind there with what's in the kitchen. So again, lots of black dark vibes and Oh yeah, that's right. I do end up changing that wood just to the usual slats that we've used everywhere else in the house. So that's what I'm doing there. Adding in a couple of plants for a bit of greenery and again to make it nice and zen because this is the most relaxing house ever, despite the fact that a lot of criminal activity goes on here in the game. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So that's our little tucked away uh, is executive area, I think you'd like to call it. And I've just got in here a couple of chairs next to where you can read your book, which is quite nice. So I really like for the most part this downstairs area. I think there's plenty of space to go and do different things for your Sims. And I have also got a bathroom downstairs. I do show this bathroom in the build here as well because it is a little bit different. And I really like what I did in the back corner here with the bath. So I wanted to have this little sunken bathtub area which was tucked away and have a big living wall behind it so that's what I'm doing as well again trying to keep that zen vibe flowing through the entire house so I just use platforms to create steps down into that little sunken bath area and then I just created a bunch of ivy and all sorts of like wall plants creeping up the side there if that was a bath in my house I would definitely fall asleep in it I'd be so relaxed and otherwise you can also have a shower here in the big walk-in shower. There's heaps of space around the toilet, which I'm gonna pop in now, which is a luxury. True story, my bathroom has, it's tiny, it's so small. And when you sit on the toilet in our house, you can barely fit because the walls are so close into the side of you and the counter. So it's a bit of a pain. <laughs> so I'm giving my Sims plenty of room to go to the bathroom here, which is what I'm just popping in now. And otherwise, I think, what else do we do in here? Oh, yes, that's right. When we leave the bathroom, we're going to add in a little area to play the piano. And that's about it. But guys, I just want to say thank you so, so much for tuning in again this week. If you're someone that comes back every week, I do really, really appreciate it. Every comment, every like, I just... Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to see you guys again next Tuesday for another build. Have a good one, guys. Bye.